Hey everybody, my name is Michael and today I want to have a look at the dependency injection integration that we have in Hot Chocolate with a specific focus on how to instantiate services that use Entity Framework or if you want to use Entity Framework DB context directly in your resolver. Before we get started, we are running workshops at multiple conferences throughout this year. So if you want to have a deep dive into GraphQL, learn all about Hot Chocolate and explore also the client side of GraphQL, how to build reactive front ends with GraphQL and Relay, then join us. And if you cannot make it to one of these conferences, don't worry. We also have an online workshop where you can sign up through Eventbrite. Hope to see you at one of our workshops, either in person or online. If you like our content, please hit the like and subscribe button below the video. And with that, Let's dive in. I already prepared here a little project. We have here in the data folder a DB context called asset context, and we got two entities, asset and asset price. So what we want to explore here is a bit of how we can use a DB context in our resolvers and what side effects or downsides each approach has. Okay, let's head over to the program CS and then set up the DB context. If I want to set up my DB context, I'm using the builder here. On the builder, I have the services and there I have the add DB context helper method to set up my DB context. In our case, it's the asset DB context or asset context. And we got some local DB here. It's an SQLite that is down here. So I'm putting in the connection string for that. And then we have set up our DB context. And this DB context now is a scoped DB context. So for each HTTP request, we essentially have a single DB context by default. And this can be a problem because when we have multiple resolvers running in parallel, we get into trouble because the DB context that we share then in this HTTP request actually is not thread safe. And that means that we get into nasty exceptions that sometimes happen and sometimes not. So the solution we used to tell you is that you can opt into the pool DB context factory. With the pool DB context factory, we can inject from the dependency injection something called the IDB context factory here. And that DB context factory then allows us to create a DB context and we could then use this DB context to do database requests. And this would be safe because each instance or each piece of code that uses this context factory here would have its own DB context instance to work on. This means if we think about services that you would have to rewrite everything you have. And there was one big feedback of the community that most people cannot do that. So this brings us back to the scoped approach where we just say add DB context and then have a scoped instance. But there's one thing we can actually do better. If you can use pool DB context, you can also have this scoped version, but you say add DB context pool. What this does is use the pooling without needing the factory. So we still have one single instance per HTTP request or per service scope, but this instance is retrieved from the pool. So we are reusing DB context, have a better memory footprint, but we have the same usage than we had before with the non-pooled version. So how can we use that in Hot Chocolate? Let's create a query type. So I'm creating here a new file called query. And this query is actually our query type. And then we add a simple resolver to it. And actually we can make that static with Hot Chocolate 13 here. Since we don't have any instance variables, so we can leave that static. And if we look at this resolver, it's very simple. We get in an asset context here. That's our DB context. And then we query it for assets and order it by the tradable market cap. So this is good. We could use that. Let's wire up our GraphQL configuration. So we go back here and then we add another service here called add GraphQL server. Let me actually reformat that. And then we add here add types. So I'm frequently asked, where is this method get types? And it doesn't exist. So what is happening here is that this is a source generator and you can see it generates us code and automatically registers here the query that we wrote down here, our query type. And how that works is actually that we have here in the properties a module info and there is this assembly attribute and we call this module types. So then our code generator will generate an add types extension method. And the source generator is this package down here. If you have that in your project, then it will do this auto generation and do this type auto registration. 
just if you're looking for this method, it doesn't exist. So next thing is we want to declare for our GraphQL server how we can deal actually with this asset context here. And for this, we use this register DB context extension method. And actually this extension method comes from this package here, a chocolate data entity framework. In this package, we have some entity framework related code to make it simpler to use it. Okay, back here in our program CS, we now gonna use this register DB context method to register the asset context. We kind of tell our GraphQL configuration, we want to register the asset context as a well-known service with our GraphQL engine. And then we don't have to use any attributes in our query type here. So usually we would use an attribute here that says this is a service. We can now leave that away. Plus this method also defines how we use this service. So by default, let's go in this, scroll to the side, and then you can see we have a DB context kind here. And the DB context kind specifies three different behaviors for services synchronized, where the execution engine will guarantee that only one thread access your DB context. This is not so good for performance. So I wouldn't recommend using it. We just have that or legacy support. We have the pooled version where we would deal with the DB context factory for you. This is what we used to recommend with hot chocolate 11 or 12. But we also now have the resolver kind here. And the resolver kind means that we create a service scope per resolver and retrieve from the service scope the DB context. So you don't have to do any change on how you use DB context. We just create a scope per resolver where we execute database related logic and dispose the scope after this resolver pipeline is completed. And this actually gets the best of both worlds. You kind of can use it like you were using the synchronized behavior, but you get all the benefits of the pooled. So by default, we now use the DB context kind resolver. And that's a change actually towards version 12, where the default I think was synchronized. And you can see that here, right? Resolver is our default state. But what is interesting here is that only this service will be retrieved from the DB context that is bound to this resolver. All other services I would use here, for instance, the weather service here would be retrieved from the request scope. Okay, let's try that out. I'm gonna dot net watch this thing. We are up. I'm going here to my local host. I'm getting banana cake pop here. Let's create a new tab. And then we just query into our assets and we run the query and we get the results. So very easy how we can use that. And that also works now if we use, for instance, multiple requests. Like I'm using here aliases to call this field multiple times in our GraphQL request and it still works, right? I don't get any exceptions here, can run that as often as I want and it works. So that's where people actually ask. So you only show the examples with the DB context directly in your resolver, but in an actual application, we have services or repositories or whatever, and then it doesn't work, but it does. Let's have a look at how we would do that with a service in between. So so in my case, we are gonna create a little repository and this repository does constructor injection of the asset context here. And then let's say we have a method in here that gets the top cryptocurrencies by market capitalization. So what we would do is introduce here a method. This method gives us a fixed list here of assets. Let's call it get top assets and it's async. And we give it a number of how many top items we want to have. So it's a basic count, the cancellation token for good measure. Okay, that's our method, basically how we want to use it. And uh, we would, uh, missing a Y here, you know, real typo on tape. After fixing all these issues, we can use that now here. And this is our asset repository and our resolver. Let's give the parameter count in here. That's the count parameter we want to allow our users to use to tell us how many top items they want to have. Then we get rid of this guy here and say, we are going to use the asset repository. Also need a cancellation token. So we wire that in our resolver. What the resolver does is the execution engine will give us the request abort cancellation token, essentially the cancellation token that's on top of the HTTP context. So next we got to change this here because that's now a task. And then our resolver actually looks good here. We just need to implement our asset repository now. Let's 
put that together. So this method we need to implement out. So I reformatted this whole thing so we can better read it. And then we are actually good to go. Let's move that out into its own file. And then let's go to our program CS because that's where we're gonna change something. So now we wanna wire up the repository here. So we can leave the DB context here, but we actually don't need it anymore because no resolver uses the asset DB context now directly. So we could get rid of it. But our other service we're gonna use. And there is this register service here, and that is for standard services. And in this case, we are just passing on our asset repository into this register service method here. And then again, we have here a service kind. In case of services, we by default do not add behavior to it. So it's different to the DB context registration method where we already pre-selected a good default for you. But in this case, we are just using the service from the HTTP context. So the request service, because with most services, this is the best you can do. But in this case, we are using the DB context as a dependency of our service. And, and thus we also inherit all the downsides that we have with the DB context that we cannot execute with multiple threads on it and so on and so forth. So we're going to use here the service kind resolver. And then we have the same behavior than we had with the register DB context just now for this service. So let's run that and you can see it's already up because don't know what already restarted our service. So I'm going here and if I refresh the schema, you can see there is something wrong because we now have to pass in the count here. And actually let's do one more refactoring because that's not quite right. Our resolver should reflect our business model behind that. And so this is actually get top assets async, right? So the service restarting, let's refresh that. And then this is actually top assets and we want to get two. Let's take four and six. We run that and we get an error here because we forgot one thing. And that was actually, let's go back to our program CS and you can see the problem. We didn't register our service. So let's do that. So this is a scoped service and it's called asset repository. Just gonna inject it like this. Okay, our service restarted and then we can fire it up again. Again, then it works and see we have two, we have four and then we have six. So that's actually how we want to use that. So now we have this nice abstraction where we don't anymore use the DB context directly in our resolver. We use the service and it also works just as if you would use the DB context directly here. And if you're asking yourself, how would I do that with filtering and sorting and paging? I'm going to do a follow up video on this where we look into how to customize relay connections, how to actually design a service to deal with paging and stuff like that. What do you think about this new resolver kind behavior which really simplifies dependency injection with hot chocolate and also gives you full control of the service behavior that we should use per service in our resolver? If you want to help our project, please go to GitHub and give us a GitHub star. This really helps to grow our community and is the easiest way to contribute to our project. Okay, with this we're done. I'm out. See you next time.